cheers. So grab a healthy beverage and I would also get a pen and paper because you might want to take some notes. I'm going to give you a lot to uh, think about and a lot to write down so that you can have some conversations with your doctor, especially if any of you guys here who are watching this are struggling or frustrated with your blood sugars and you've made changes. You know, some, I get a lot of people who come to me with questions like, Terry, listen, I'm on the keto diet or I'm on a specific plan that I've lowered my carbs, I've lowered my sugar and I, I'm exercising and I'm doing everything right, but my blood sugars are still high and I don't know why. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight because there's a underlying reason why uh, you know, there's, I think there's three top reasons, which I'm going to go over why, why people's blood sugars are high, but there's one that's kind of a sneaky little one and that's the drugs. There's a lot of different drugs that cause your blood sugars to elevate. And although doctors should be telling you this and they, they, they have the data in front of them. In fact, I have a 19 page report that I got uh, it's information from medical professionals. This is an 18 page report that actually lists the medications that cause blood sugars to increase. And the fact that you know, you're not being told this by your physicians that, that, that having some of these drugs will cause your blood sugars to be elevated on top of already elevated blood sugars, eh, a little bit concerning. So I want to give you this information. So again, this will spark conversations that you can have with your physician and, you know, hopefully you can have even provide them with the data. I don't know. But anyway, bottom line is you're going to have the information and then you can do with it what you want. You know, my whole entire goal for any of you guys that are in this group is to help you, is to always give you the other side of the equation. You guys are all getting the allopathic medical side. I want to give you the, the holistic, the, you know, the, the, the non-medical side to create balance in the body. So those of you who are brand new to my group, my name is Terry Dale. I'm the founder of the Diabetes and Weight Loss Lifestyle Coaching Academy. And I do run a program where I teach women how to balance their bodies. That's bottom line what I do. I teach women how to balance their bodies. I teach them how to create balance in the body so that they can get to their health goal. So many women are struggling with being overweight, can't get their weight off, or have type, type 2 diabetes or prediabetes or insulin resistance. And the, the, the problem is, is the medical professionals don't specialize in diabetes or prediabetes or obesity or type 2 because diabetes is a nutritional disease, unless it's type 1. Type 1 is an autoimmune. It's, you're born with it. That's genetic, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking type 2 or pre-diabetes or insulin resistance. It's a nutritional disease. And medical doctors aren't educated in nutrition. They're just not. It's just the facts. It's just the way it is. And so uh, that's where I really, that's kind of my superpower is I'm really good at helping women to use nutrition and holistic therapeutics to create balance in the body. Medical doctors are good with taking your situation and diagnosing. They're amazing at diagnosing. They're amazing at trauma care and they're amazing at surgery. Amazing at it. So if you ever need a doctor to diagnose you, they are amazing at that. But once you get diagnosed, then what? What do they do? They're, they're, plan is they diagnose and they treat with medications. Diagnose, treat. Diagnose, treat. When you treat, you don't heal. You treat. And when you treat, you don't get better. You either get worse or if anything, stay the same. I don't, there's not a lot of women I know that stay the same when they're, when they're treated, they get worse because your body breaks down. So medical doctor diagnoses, treats with medications. What I do is I, we get to die. We work with your medical doctor. We get the diagnosis and then we under, we, we discover what the imbalance is and we, we heal the body by using lifestyle approach, nutrition, supplements, lifestyle, you know, and we, we are able then to wean you off of the medications. 
right? So drugs, and we're talking about drugs tonight, drugs, although in some instances is necessary and important short term, I am from the f- mentality and I am from the opinion that if you have to be on medication for the rest of your life, or if you're on medications for the wrong reasons, that's going to promote imbalance and deterioration of your health. And you are going to l- understand this by the end of this class tonight, because I got a lot of stuff for you to, to review and to learn. So again, this information in this class is the result of my research and my own client case studies. This class is used for educational and informational purpose only and is not to be misconstrued as medical advice. Okay, you always want to go to your doctor for his medical opinion and his diagnosis. When you get a diagnosis, though, it's never just one thing. When you get a diagnosis of diabetes, when you get a diagnosis of high blood pressure, when you get a diagnosis of fibromyalgia, when you get a diagnosis of IBS, when you get a diagnosis of gastritis, when you get a diagnosis of high cholesterol, okay? It's never just one thing that's causing that disease. It's a combination of things that have accumulated and imbalances that have accumulated over time that when you go to a a physician to get diagnosed, they will usually say it's caused by one thing. And then they look at that one disease and they medicate it. That is just not the truth. It's just not that you can't, having disease, especially diabetes is a combination of, of inflammation in the body. And these are the things that cause your body to be imbalanced. Inflammation, hormones, stress, right? Drugs, medications cause imbalance in the body. Believe it or not, they treat, but they also cause imbalance in the body because they cause side effects of, you know, other things that break down in your body. Your nutrition, if your nutrition is not right for your body and and your situation, you are going to have imbalance in the body. If you're not nutrified, meaning if you're not getting the right nutrients that your bodies need on a daily basis to heal itself, it's going to break down. And then obviously, if you are just have a high stress load and your mindset is just negative, or you've got issues with your mindset, again, that's going to cause inflammation and flare things up. And also if you're unable to exercise or move, our bodies require movement, right? So all of these things together, it's not just one thing that's causing your disease or your symptoms. It's a breakdown of a bunch of things. So tonight we're talking about blood sugar specifically, and we're talking about, um, you know, what causes your blood sugars to be high. And I think there's three things, three main things that cause your blood sugars to be high. And by the way, your blood sugars are not high because you lack blood lowering medications. Having a normal blood sugar is so important for having good optimization of your health. And there are so many of you who have cleaned up your diet, who have lowered the amount of sugar that you eat, and you've implemented exercise and you've reduced your carbohydrates, but your blood sugars are still high. Why? Well, I think there's three reasons. Now, when you go to a medical doctor, here's how he diagnoses you for diabetes or type two or any disease. They take a blood test and a fasting glucose test, an A1C. They check your cholesterol and your blood pressure. They ask if your family has a history of any of those diseases. And if any of these are out of their parameter of numbers in their charts, they immediately will just put you on medication. So if your blood test comes back, and you have a blood, clo- a blood glucose reading of, um, let's say, 160, right? They're not going to ask you questions like, okay, well, is it always 160? How long have it, has it been 160? Is this just, have you checked your blood sugars before? You know, like, is this just, did, what did you eat last night? You know, they're not going to ask you those preliminary questions. They're going to say, oh, your blood sugars are high. Do you, have a fa- do you have a history of diabetes in your family? And then they're going to say, I think we need to put you on some preventative metformin or Genuvia or something, right? They're going to put you on, they're going to suggest that you take medications. And then they're going to say, oh, well, you know what? Because your blood sugars are high, 
Now that means that your cholesterol numbers are probably high and, and your, if your blood pressure is a little elevated, then we better put you on those medications. Instead of asking the key questions about what is the imbalance, it's never just one thing that's causing your blood pressure to be high. It's never just one thing that's causing your, your, heart, your heart rate to be high. It's never just one thing that's causing your cholesterol to be high. It's never just one thing that's causing your blood pressure to be elevated. It's just not. So instead of right away being put on a medication, which is what they do, because that's what they know how to do. That's what they're taught in med school. We want to figure out and ask the question to figure out, hmm, what could be the imbalances? And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of things going on all at the same time. So let's figure out what those are first before we start like, you know, you know, depending on medication. Now, one thing I'm going to say is that not all medication all the time is bad. Sometimes medication is needed. Thank God for antibiotics when you have an infection. Thank God for Novocaine when you need to get, you know, your tooth out or you have su surgery. Thank God, right? I mean, seriously. So I'm not saying all medications are bad all the time. How I'm, what I'm saying is that medication should not be the go-to in non-emergency situations. You should take a look at your scenario and say, hey, what is going on? Like, what could be the underlying root cause? And, and that's what, in this group anyway, what, I'm, what every week what I help you do is give you different topics where you can start to assess your situation and start asking yourself better questions and changing your protocols and maybe having conversations with your medical doctor about what you can do to change so that you can create balance in the body versus just keep treating it, okay? So when you go to medical doctor, that's how they treat you. That's how they diagnose you. They, they do blood tests. They take your fasting blood glucose, your A1C, and then they check your cholesterol, and then they put you on medications. That's what they do. So I think there's three main reasons why, uh, why your blood sugars are high. Okay, diet, stress level, and medication. So your diet, obviously, of course, if you're eating, you know, really bad foods, that are high in sugar, or you're eating a lot of carbs. I mean, this is not rocket science, right? You guys know this. If you're eating really, really bad foods, that's going to elevate your sugar, okay? But what about those of you who are eating right and your blood sugars are still high? Hmm? Well, then we got to look at, okay, what's your stress level like? When you're super duper duper stressed, you're releasing a hormone called cortisol, and cortisol is going to raise your blood sugars. It's your body's protection. So if you have a lot of stress in your life, you're going to have high cortisol. Now, high stress in your life doesn't mean just emotional stress. It can be stress on the body. It can be, you know, that you have an internal infection. It can be that you just, you're recovering from, uh, you know, surgery. Like that is internal stress on the body. It could be that you've, you've had, you know, if you've had COVID, that is stress on the body because it's, it's an internal infection that is inside of your body and that's causing stress. And anytime your body's stressed, you're going to raise cortisol. Okay. So again, we've got to just take a look at everything, not just one thing. And then the third thing is if you are doing everything right, if you are doing your diet right, if you're managing your stress and your you know, blood sugars are still high, then you have to consider Maybe it's medications that are, are pushing your blood sugars up, right? There's been so many times where I would discover a client of mine who is stumped by this when her blood sugars are high, and then we do an assessment on her blood sugars, and it'll be like, oh, well, no wonder. You know, there's a lot of medications that increase blood sugars. And here's the deal. Doctors are supposed to know this info, but they do not share this with their patients, and that's what makes me so confused and so frustrated. I mean... I have an 18 page report here that's for medical professionals, 18 pages that sh show you every single medication that is proven, has studies done on it, that these medications will increase your blood sugars. So listen, if you have already been diagnosed with type two or prediabetes, and then you go to your medical doctor and they say, you should go on this drug, this drug, this drug. It's defeating the purpose. If, so they're going to put you on, they're going to put you on drugs to lower your medication, to lower your blood sugars, but then they're going to put you on other drugs that are going to increase it. So no wonder why when my girls come to me and they're on insulin and metformin and their blood sugars are still flipping high, 
because you're on these other medications that are causing their blood sugars to high, be high. So you're on insulin metformin to push the sugar down, but then you're on high blood pressure or beta blockers, and that's bringing it back up. It's like, what? It doesn't make sense, right? So this is why it, it, the priority and the goal should be to figure out what the underlying root cause is so that you can wean off of your medications. And that's what we do, right? We really work hard on finding the underlying root cause so that we can bring down the medications. And of course we work with the medical doctors, but again, if the medical doctors have an 18 page report showing that that raises the blood sugar, then why are they, why are they, why? Like, I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Just saying, it's very, it's very frustrating. Very frustrating. So let's talk about the, the, the medications that actually raise, that are proven to raise blood sugar. Now there's a lot of them. Like I said, there's 18 pages here of, of um, drugs, but I'm just going to go over the most common ones. The most common ones that my clients especially get, get put on by their medical doctors. And by the way, I will definitely, if you guys want, I will put a PDF copy of this report inside of this group for you in the file section. And you guys can take this and print this off and you can bring this to your medical doctor if you want. It'll be very fascinating to see what his response, his or she's response is, but um, I, I definitely will do that. So I wanna go over the common ones in this report that are proven to raise your blood sugars. Um, corticoid steroid drug class drugs. There's over a hundred of these different drugs in this class, cortisone, prednisone. And why do these raise it? Because they have a, a profound effect on carb metabolism and they stimulate the production of glucose and block the entry of glucose into the muscles. So, so corticoid steroid drug classes are going to raise your blood sugars. Gabapentin, gabapentin is used for chronic nerve pain and neuropathy. That's another one that will increase your, um, your, bu your uh, blood glucose. Another class is your blood pressure medications and beta blockers. Why? Because any of these meds that you take there, the in an o OL, like metroprolol, lepiprolol, all of those OL medications, those are all blood pressure and beta blocker drugs. And studies have shown that these drugs make diabetes worse if you have diabetes. So if you have diabetes, most of the time you're put on these blood blood pressure medications. And so you can just be rest assured if you're on a blood pressure medication and you've already been diagnosed with diabetes, your blood, your diabetes and blood sugars are going to get worse. If you don't have diabetes and you're put on, put on blood pressure medications, there's a, almost a 30%, 30% chance that you will develop prediabetes or diabetes if you don't already have diabetes and you're put on beta blockers or blood pressure medications, 30%. So if you think about that, especially then if you're not eating right and you're not following other lifestyle protocol, you know, protocols, your chances are probably higher than 30% if you're on a blood pressure medication, okay? Another, a few other ones, um, albuterol for asthma, been known, the, uh, the Ambilify, which are prescribed for mental health or schizophrenia. So if you're prescribed a mental health drug, right, you go into your doctor and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm getting a mental health drug for schizophrenia or whatever. And then the side effect of that will be probably a secondary diagnosis down the road of diabetes because it's known to increase your blood sugars. So it's like, you have to just understand this stuff. So when you go to your medical doctor and they diagnose you with these specific you know, diseases, you have to be able to have these conversations saying, well, okay, if, if I'm going to, you go on a drug for this, but then I could develop this. What's, what do I do? Like, what's the benefit? Kind of like the risk reward, right? Um, so again, those are popular drugs that people are put on all the time. The antipsychotic drugs. Another one would be like Prozac or any of those that are, you know, for um, depression medications. So not only antipsychotic, but depression medications. Okay. Um, I already talked about this, but any of the statins, the Lipitor's, the statins, uh, um, COPD medications, like inhalers, that's another common one that will do that. Um, the other one is diuretics. 
<laughs> like uh, furosemide and bumetanide. And those are taken for edema and fluid retention. So you have diuretics and you have thiazide diuretics, which are in a class of drugs all by themselves, which also treat blood pressure, right? So you have diuretics for edema, then you have thiazide diuretics, which are used in, con in, in conjunction with high blood pressure medications. And, and the reason why those are so bad is because they block the reabsorption of sodium in the kidneys. And also you're losing potassium through urine when you take a diuretic. So not good. Thyroid medications like levothyroxine or Synthroid or Cytomel or uh, levothyronine. So a lot of people don't realize that thyroid medications can raise your blood sugar. So if you've been on a high dose of thyroid medications and your blood sugars are always high, that's the reason why. I have a lot of clients who have been on thyroid medication for many years, and then they'll have what they say is the dawn phenomenon, and they just can never get their blood sugars down, and we've done everything, right? And it, it could just be that when you're on, if, because when you're on thyroid medication, you can never go off of it. That's the one medication that you just can't go off of it. And it's just the way it is. However, by increasing the, decreasing the imbalances in the body, cleaning up your lifestyle, getting nutrified, you sometimes can lower the amount of thyroid medication that you have. And when you lower that amount of thyroid medication, a lot of times your blood sugars will follow. But if you're on a high dose of thyroid medication, you know, because your lifestyle isn't on task and your blood sugars are high, that's why. So in some cases, I've seen clients who've been on thyroid medications and they just have to accept that they're always going to have a little bit more elevated of a blood sugar. So instead of having 70s, 80s as their norm, they might have 100, 100, 510. Okay. Now that's just good to know, right? So you don't drive yourself stir crazy about like, ah, but we just don't want to, we just, we just want to make sure that we do everything we can to get your uh, thyroid medication down to as low as possible, you know, um, so that you don't end up getting chronic high sugars and having other um, symptoms related to that. Okay. So uh, the other class of drugs is the HRT, hormone replacement therapy um, drugs or birth control pills, you know, estrogen, progesterone creams, uh, all of that, that is going to cause what's called estrogen dominance um, or even progesterone. I had this issue. I had high progesterone and high progesterone in your body. And many of you are taking progesterone creams or pills like they're candy. And then you're wondering why you're not losing weight. You might be sleeping better, but you're not losing weight and your blood sugars are high. So hormone replacement therapy is tricky. And I should do a whole, I should do a whole class at hormone replacement therapy because I just, I'm not a fan of it. I, I'm, I'm truly a believer that if you, if you practice the lifestyle approach, if you fix the imbalances in your body, you're, you're, you're following a process that I teach that is, you know, new, being nutrified, eating foods that are going to keep your body balanced. You're, you're not necessarily don't need hormone replacement therapy. And I've, talked about this a little bit before. I'm going a little bit off on a tangent here, but the reason I'm sharing this is because when women like us go through menopause or are going through menopause or perimenopause, right? Our bodies are so brilliantly created. When our hormones decline because we're no longer in childbearing years, our ovaries no longer produce eggs, right? And that means that our ovaries kind of decline, meaning we don't produce estrogen, okay? We get low on estrogen. But look how God created us. God created us so that when we, our ovaries decline, guess what organs take the place? The adrenals. The adrenals now are the ones responsible for, for producing the hormones that the ovaries can't. What happens though, is when women get to menopause age, their adrenals are so fried that when they go through menopause, their symptoms are out of control because their adrenals are so suppressed also that the adrenals can't take the slack for what the ovaries no longer can produce. I am not on hormone replacement therapy. I am, my hormones are fine. 
I'm, I don't even know. I think I'm going, I must be going through menopause. I mean, I'm getting to the age where I'm, but I don't have any symptoms of perimenopause, perimenopause or menopause. Well, I wonder why that is. Well, I think I, I think I know the reason. So anyway, boy, whew, I went off on a tangent there. All right. So anyway, so hormone replacement therapies and, and the birth control pill, they are just going to raise your estrogen. So if you have to be on birth control, then you want to make sure that you do other things to uh, get your body, you know, really, uh, um, um, what's the word? get it really amped up to be able to accommodate the higher blood sugar levels. So that would be including lifestyle, you know, protocols and lifestyle decisions that will allow you to have a little bit of flex in those higher blood sugars. Because if you're on the pill, it's going to raise your blood sugar. Um, the other thing is sleeping pills like Ambien. Those have been also known to raise your blood sugar. Okay. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of, there's a lot of drugs that will cause your blood sugars to be elevated. So this is just one thing that you can take a look at. Normal blood sugars being non-prediabetic or type 2 diabetic, normal blood sugars between 75 and 85. If you're, and this is the average. So if you wake up in the morning and your blood sugars are, you know, way over 85, like between 100, 125, that's going to be di a diagnosis of prediabetes. Anything over 126 is going to be a type 2 diabetes, okay? Our goal is to make sure that we have enough, uh, our cells are able to accommodate the sugar that we put in. Okay, I want to just talk about this real quick because this is so, so, it's again going a little off the topic, but I just want you to see how our bodies are so amazingly designed. One teaspoon of sugar in our body is four grams of sugar. So one teaspoon of sugar, table sugar, is equal to four grams. Okay, four grams is equivalent to 80 millimoles per deciliter, or in for you Canadians, it would be 4.4 millimoles per liter. So if you think about it, one teaspoon of table sugar equals four grams. So if you look on the back of a label, four grams is one teaspoon. And that one teaspoon is equivalent to 80 milligrams per deciliter or 4.4 millimoles per liter. So when you take your blood sugars and it's 80, you know you have one teaspoon of sugar circulating in the blood. That's all our body needs is one teaspoon of glucose in the blood at one given time. So if you have one and one fourth teaspoon of sugar in your body, now you're, that, that would be a reading of 126 millimoles per, per Milli, milligrams per deciliter or 7.0 millimoles per liter. One and one fourth teaspoon. So if, if a medication just elevates it by 20, 30 points, it's going to keep you in that, it's going to make you a pre-diabetic for a long time until you can get that blood sugar down, right? So our bodies are, are designed to maintain homeostasis. And what I mean by that is our body wants to keep our sugars. Homeostasis means it wants to keep it at 80 milligrams per deciliter or 4.4 millimoles, 80 or less, 4.4 or less. That's what our bodies try to keep it at. But when we continue to put sugar in and we eat so many carbs, we eat the wrong diet and we increase our inflammation and we are on all these medications, our body can't, it can't, it can't maintain that sugar anymore. It, it, it just can't keep the sugar down. It can't keep it down. It's, it, it wears out. The pancreas wears out the mechanisms for the insulin to push the sugar. And it, it just gets tired. It wears out. Then our, our blood sugars become chronically high. This is why it's never just one thing. So, okay. I went off on a tangent there. I'm sorry. 